So today we're going to be talking about the disciplines of highly successful real estate agents. All right. So what separates the top agents from everyone else? Well, it's not necessarily innate talent or just luck. It's a combination of hard work, dedication, and discipline. And in this video, you'll learn the disciplines that will help you become a highly successful real estate agent. And being disciplined in your craft, be getting better at what you do, is going to be the key to seeing success. So join, come with me as we go into this topic, the disciplines of highly successful real estate agents. All right, so being a, a successful real estate agent takes more than just being good at your job, right? It takes dedication, discipline, and willingness to continue learning and growing no matter what. You're never on this, this stale position where it's all, yeah, I've arrived. Um, in real estate, it's a constantly changing market, shifting and pivoting, and, and there's just things always going on that require us to be able to reposition ourselves and, and then learn new disciplines that hold us accountable so we can continue to grow our business. So if you're not constantly working to improve your skills, you'll quickly fall behind the competition because I guarantee you others are doing so. But if you can commit to following these disciplines I'm gonna be talking about today, you'll be well on your way to a successful career in real estate. Here's a quote for you by Jeff Fisher, and he said this, discipline is doing what you really don't want to do so you can do what you really want to do. And that's discipline. Discipline kind of is one of those things, it's almost like a negative word, but because if we're disciplined in our craft, we'll actually follow through and we'll see the the results from that discipline. So it is kind of negative because it's usually typically things we don't want to do. And we have to make the choice, a conscious choice to do those things. Well, these are some of those disciplines and we're going to get into them now. We're going to begin with number one. Number one is this and it's get organized. Okay. The disciplining of getting organized organized. The first step in to, uh, the first step to being a successful real estate agent, agent is organizing the business itself. Okay, the, what you do on a daily basis. This means having a system in place for tracking your leads, keeping track of your appointments, keeping track and staying on top of your paperwork. Without organization, it will be difficult to stay on top of everything and you'll quickly become overwhelmed. It's a, it's a, it can be a very overwhelming job because we get a lot thrown at us. So if you can begin to be disciplined in creating systems in place for your business, that's gonna ultimately help you to scale your business as more and more is thrown at you. But you have to start with organizing every aspect of your life. That comes from time management, it comes from tracking your leads and how you, you gather that data, where you put that data, it, it, the appointments you set, so being, being really good at, at follow through with your appointment setting, your calendar, keeping a good calendar system, and also your paperwork, keeping organizing your paperwork and your checklist and those type of things. I will say this, I'll recommend a book, and um, it's called The Checklist Manifesto. Checklist Manifesto, I thought I might have a copy here, but I don't. Checklist Manifesto is all about developing systems that help keep you organized so you consistently deliver a, a good service. It's a great book, it's a great read. Um, encourage you guys to check that out, but it is all about kind of developing those systems to help you be consistent. But here's some tips for you and some things what you wanna focus on as far as getting organized, okay? So number one of the tips I would say is you need a good CRM. You need a contact relation management software. Um, it has kind of become in, in our arena and most arenas, especially sales arena, it has become the hub of all that we do, right? It's where we put our data, it's where we track our appointments, it's where we track our communications. Everything is inside of there. And a good CRM system will help you keep track of all of those things, the prospects, the leads, as well as the content information and, and property uh, references and preferences about what they're looking for. Additionally, a CRM system can help you stay on top of your tasks and appointments. So you can use a CRM. If you have a good CRM, what I encourage you to do is spend some time getting to know how it works. Learn the intricacy details of, of what all it's capable of doing. Don't try to implement all of what a CRM can do at, at the very beginning. Start with the simple simple things as just adding all of your contacts in. Then go from adding all your contacts to organizing them in a systematic way. Buyers, sellers, past buyers, future sellers, whatever the case may be, put them into some kind of system that way you know how to communicate with each individual group. Then after you kind of get 
familiar with that, start looking at the CRM and see if it has a way for you to set appointments through there, if it has a way to keep a track, track of your tasks that you're going to do every single day. Um, just kind of get, get really good at a CRM. The other one is going to be set up in a file, set up a filing system. Um, is, uh, mostly at these, these days we're using digital type of filing systems. Like we use dot loop here. Um, you, there's other things, DocuSign. There's other ones out there that do the exact same thing. Um, but when it comes to setting up a filing system, it's going to be more or less about trying to figure out a way that keeps that consistency where, you know, where the information is being stored. So it's not just a jumbled mess. So if I need to go in there and find some very pertinent information about a particular deal, I know how to find it inside of my system. So maybe that comes through organizing it in a, in a systematic way where maybe you, you, you file everything with a, a typical name or category. Maybe you'll say buyer and then their name and then the property they're under contract with or whatever that system may be, whatever triggers you where you can look at the file and say, oh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Because we're all talking about time management too a little bit here. Because if you have a good filing system set up, you're going to be able to stay on point and get the information you need quickly, which means you're going to be able to answer the questions of your clients and the providers that you're working with and those type of things. So get really good at filing your paperwork. Uh, if you if you are using a digital uh, way of keeping paperwork, what I encourage you to do is go in there and start cleaning that up and making it cleaner so you know where everything is. The blank documents, where those are, your buyers and seller clients, get in there and start organizing that and develop that system because it is going to help you long term, especially if you're scaling your business up where you're handling more people than you're used to handling. So developing these systems now before you're too busy makes it a whole lot easier. Um, the next one I would say is create a daily schedule. Uh, one of the best ways to stay organized is, is just to create that daily schedule. Now, I, I typically will fall, fall into my calendar and do like checklists. These are the things that I've got to get done today. And my calendar is full of a lot of checks where I can say, I got to do this, this, and this. And I check it off as the day progresses. But then I also time block inside of those, like what I'm going to do when. And I try to hold, uh, you know, really hold, uh, hold to that plan. Try not to deviate from it too much. So I know that the pertinent things that I need to address is being addressed. So that's, that's a big key is create a daily schedule. Take some time work through your planner, time block things that are relevant to you, like prospecting, uh, making appointments, whatever the case, uh, door knocking for sale by owners. By scheduling your time, you can ensure that you are going to make the most of each day and stay on top of your responsibilities. It, these are key to organizing your life. And then prioritize your tasks too. Like there's, there's a lot of things that we can get caught up in doing that distract us from uh, away from the things that we need to be doing. So if you, in the mornings, maybe sit down or the night, or the night before, sit down and create a priority list. It says like, these are the, these are the non-negotiables that I've got to get done tomorrow and then organize those and get them in a systematic way where you can check them off as you go. Uh, but it's gonna help you to stay on point and address those things you need to be addressing. And then also the final tip I'll give you on this organization thing is sometimes, if, and you might be at this point already, that there's so much work at the busy work, the administrative stuff, that it might be time to delegate a little bit. Maybe delegate to a family member or another colleague in the office, or if, if you're really growing your real estate business, hiring an assistant. Um, now, I am pro trying to retain profits as much as possible and, reduces, and reduce expenses. So you'll need to weigh that option as far as assistant or not, a, not having an assistant. It is a balancing act. Um, assistant is really good when they're doing their job, but they can also be hard to manage if they're not doing their job. So delegate when possible. Be wise. If you feel like you're at that point where you need an assistant or you need to bring in a family member, whatever the case may be, understand the task that you're going to assign them. And then be okay with letting go and letting that get done. Um, of course, adhere to all of your laws in your state that in regards to hiring an assistant or having other people work in the real estate industry without a license. That is absolutely key. Um, Orson Sweat Martin said this, a good system shortens the road to the goal. I like that. A good system shortens the road to the goal. So if you have a goal, here you go. This is going to short it, shorten it because you've organized everything in a systematic way to help get things done. Number two is this. This is, this is number two in the way to be an, another discipline that you've got to develop. And that is simply to stay focused. Stay focused. It's easy to get sidetracked, and when you're, it, especially when you're in real estate. There are always new houses to look at, new people to meet, uh, new things to learn, new technology that you might need to be embracing, other ones you might not need to be embracing. But if you want to be successful, if you do want to be successful, you need to stay focused on your goals and work hard to achieve them. Otherwise, you'll never reach your full potential.
Simply as that. You need, you need to be able to understand your goals and write them out and realize that no matter what, this is what I'm focused on. And then you're developing tasks and prioritizing everything that you do to go back to those goal sets, right? That this is my, this is where I want to be. Everything else could be a distraction and I need to keep my focus here. So here's some tips for you in regards to staying focused. Set realistic goals for yourself and your business. Set realistic goals for yourself and your business. Because if you don't set realistic goals and you set something way so out so far and so lofty, now it's okay to set like a three, five, 10 year plan. That's fine. But you also need those micro goals that's going to help you get to those ma major milestones. So if, if you're not setting those realistic goals, it's a whole lot easier to lose your focus because you're, so, you're focused so far out that, that that win is so far out that you're not getting those micro wins. So you're not as motivated to stay focused. So if you say, I want to close, you know, two sales a month or whatever the case may be, then you need to figure out the, and prioritize your task and stay focused on those tasks to help you accomplish that goal. Because that's a, that's an easier goal, right? Than saying I need to sell, you know, $300,000 in commissions this year and those type of things, which is fine, but work back from there. Set simple, realistic goals. Make a plan of action and stick to it. Going back to the goals. If you have a goal set here, figure out the action items you need to be able to get there. And then you stick to that plan. And then you definitely need to set aside time each day to work on your business and make sure you stick to that schedule. Uh, don't, don't fall into the trap where you're kind of juggling all these things that don't make you money. Um, because what will happen is if you don't delegate time for every day to do certain tasks like prospecting, you're going to get distracted by all the busy work that you've got to be doing. So be sure that you, you know, you take the, you know, you set aside that time to say, I'm going to do these things. It's going to ultimately lead to my, to my goals, right? Um, take breaks when you need them. Uh, I will say this, this is, we, we talked about this last time when it came, when I was talking about emotions, but staying focused sometimes is hard to do when you're just kind of disconnected in your mind and your mind's constantly wondering, it might be time to shut down for just a five, 10 minutes and then, regather your thoughts and recommit yourself to accomplishing that task, right? So analyze that and then get back to work. But taking breaks is okay to help you, you know, be able to refocus. Avoid distractions. Uh, the biggest distractions I have found when you're trying to do something that is actually helping you grow your business, it is going to be your phone. So and, and any other technology advice, device, if you're not needing that for that time block or that that moment of focus, then I would say put that away. Uh, set it aside, get to it in 30 minutes or whatever the case may be, and then focus in on what you need to be doing. And then finally, find a mentor or coach who can help you stay on track and achieve your goals. If, if you're having a hard time staying focused, it might be time to, and I'm not saying you have to go out and hire a mentor or hire a coach. If you can, awesome, do so. But I would simply say, find somebody that's going to hold you accountable to that because that's ultimately going to help you, right? All right, number three, um, discipline that we had to develop. And this one can be kind of, we, I don't know why we are really bad at this, but it happens in the real estate industry and it might happen just in sales industry in general, but it's being responsive, being responsive. And I, I say we kind of struggle with this one. It's because it's, it's almost like we're constantly being hit up with uh, more and more messages. And sometimes we forget to follow back, but a discipline to develop is always responding to people needing something. So when someone reaches out to you with a question or concern, it's important. It really is important that you respond promptly. I'm not saying you have to be available 24 seven, but answering questions and being there for people promptly, whether it's a potential client who wants more information um, about a property or a current client who needs help with their paperwork, you do need to be responsive so that they know that you, they can count on you. Um, it's a discipline to develop because we kind of fall into the trap where it's like, I'm tired. I don't really feel like doing that right now. And that can be the difference of a, of a big sale or a sale falling through. So make sure you're responsive. You want to be known as an agent that does follow through what they say. And if you're at the very beginning meeting with somebody and you say, look, I'm, I, I respond back. I always communicate. I'll call you back, those type of things. You want to make sure you follow through with that. So number, another discipline, be sure that you are responsive in all forms of communication when someone reaches out to you. All right. This is a discipline that some are really good at, others might neglect, uh, but it's staying educated, staying educate, educated. So the real estate industry is absolutely constantly changing and evolving. We're in kind of a pivot already. Um, it is going to take some re-education on pricing, uh, marketing, um, how to generate leads. Those type of things are changing. And to be successful, to be a successful agent, 
you do need to make sure that you're always keeping up with the latest changes. You need to be on point with these things. This means reading industry publications, taking relevant classes and seminars, networking with other agents and so forth. Like be involved and stay educated in what is going on because it, it truly, truly is key to that. Um, oh, I'm gonna bring this up, Terry. Uh, yes, Terry says, I, I get told all the time that agents don't respond. Wow, you called me back. That's a great point. Going back to the be responsive part, Terry, that's a great point you brought up. It's it's amazing that that is what we hear all the time in our industry, that we get told that, yeah, I never heard from my realtor. I, they never called me back or they were so hard to get a hold of. And we live in the most connected society that we that's ever existed, but yet somehow we can ghost people. And I, and I get it, we were bombarded all the time, but always, you know, re reply back. If you're not available at that moment, reply back with simply is like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not available right now, but I'll call you back in 30 minutes, whatever it is. Some kind of reply back is, is, is just a polite response. But that's, that's the key right there is that's that service that Terry's giving. Wow. You called me back. They're excited that she called her, called them back. Um, let's don't be those agents. Let's don't be those agents. Thank you, Terry. Yeah. So stay educated. That is key to stay in on point knowing what you're delivering to your clients is true and it's a discipline that will serve you very very well so some of the ways that um i i typically will stay educated is you know I, I make sure i read you know the top industry news like inman risk media those type of places i roll i enroll in classes that um that maybe i feel like i'm maybe a little weak in with the realtor association or you know with our brand Century 21 we have you know the university i can always get on there and get myself equipped with something um, that is relevant to the industry that we're finding ourselves in. And then also, um, you know, National Association of Realtors has some great materials on there, and especially under the reports tab that talks about the market and what's going on, because we do know the most common question we are asked from indirect clients or indirect sphere of influence of ours is, how's the market? So if we're educated on what's going on in the market, don't you think we'll become valuable to the person if we gave them correct information? Don't you think we're giving them something of value that's cutting through some of the noise that they're hearing on the media? I mean, so if we're staying educated ourselves and we understand what's going on, this discipline can really have pay out really strong dividends. And then I encourage this, attend real estate conventions and network with other agents. Truly get out there and get to know people, learn what you can, go and connect with other agents from other states and other countries get out there and meet them because they have a, sometimes have a different perspective about how they're doing things and, or, and, or uh, connect with agents in bigger cities and see what's going on there. Because typically the trends you see in the bigger cities come down into the more rural areas. So if you find yourself in the more rural parts of America or, or in other countries, then by all means, get in there and get connected with them because it can help you kind of forecast what might be coming your way. Right. All right. Number five, number five is be ethical. Um, you know, it's, it's funny that this has to be a discipline, but it kind of does. We find, we find that ourselves can sometimes be jeopardizing this ethical position. Sometimes we, we weigh the balances. It's like, oh, if I say this, well, I'll lose this deal. And is that the right thing to do? And, oh no, I'm gonna lose this million dollar sale if I'm directly honest. Oh, it's just a white lie. We begin to justify some of our decisions that we make. And, and since real estate is a very competitive industry, it's easy to cut the corners when you're trying to get uh, close a deal. But, but I will say, if you wanna be successful in the long run, it's important that you always act ethically. Always act ethically and do ethically uh, responsive things and do what's best for your clients at all times, even if it means losing out on a commission even if it means losing out on a commission. And I, and I, I pulled a, a, little, a little statement from our preamble, the code of ethics that, that realtors agree to. And I thought this was a, just a quick little statement. If you've never, if you are, if you are a realtor, I, I encourage you to, to at least once a year, maybe every quarter, read the code of ethics in the preamble. It will refocus you onto what truly does matter um, and what we actually do and what sets us apart from other industries. But here's just a little, a little uh, a statement out of that uh, preamble. And it says this, the term realtor has come to connote competency, competency, fairness, and high integrity resulting from adherence to a lofty ideal of moral conduct in business relations. No inducement of profit and no instruction from clients ever can justify departure from this ideal. I love that. I mean, it summarizes being ethical. Um, what we're what we're really about, what we want to be about. Um, so be ethical. And unfortunately, I would say it is a discipline we have to learn because we have to be disciplined into always doing the right thing, always doing what is right. Uh, number six is 
build relationships, build relationships, be in relationship focused. Okay. So for in order for people to trust you and to, uh, enough to help, <laughs> to help them with one of their biggest investments, their home, you do need to build strong relationships with them based on trust, respect, integrity, all those things, right? This means being honest, transparent, and always, always putting their needs first. Um, but this is a discipline because it's easy for us to hide behind the veil, um, get the contact, kind of reach out to them, and then kind of sit back and just kind of, you know, watch the, the transaction go through and navigate it from a distance. Um, but I will say get in the trenches with them and be focused and be diligent and develop the discipline of yeah, I am going to know my clients. I want to know them. I want to know how to help them and how to serve them and, and how to connect with them, what the struggles they're dealing with, all of those things. Um, it's It truly is key. You, you really need to get in there and build relationships. And it is a discipline because if you're not an extrovert where you're more introverted, you're, you're going to find it's a little harder to want to build those relationships and you, you'll, you'll kind of shy away from it. And long term, it can truly hurt your business because, I mean, statistic, st statistically over and over, it's been, it's been researched out that it, it's all about relationships and referrals. The business is all about relationships and referrals. So to do that, you do need to be connecting. You do need to be connecting with, with, um, with, your, with your people and building a relationship with them. And number seven is this, have patience. The discipline of patience. I would say this is absolutely a discipline because it's very easy to fall in the trap of not being patient, right? Buying or selling a home is a huge, huge decision, and it's not something that people take lightly, all right? They, 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 they have emotions, they're heightened, there's, there's things going on, there's complications that come up, you know, so I would encourage you to develop the discipline of patience in regards to when things go crazy and they get upset and they're acting irrational have patience with them on the other side. Don't get your opinions inserted. Don't get your emotions inserted. Be patient with them. Navigate this, this difficult uh, process w alongside them. Nurture the relationship and ultimately get to the closing. And, the, and what we're, everybody's trying to get to is bu buying or selling a new home, right? That's what we're trying to do. But, it, but you'll, your patience will be tested. Your patience will be tested with buyers that constantly want to look at 13 homes, 15 homes. Now, there are obviously things you can do to cut, try to shorten that and objection handling to try to make sure that you're, you're helping to stay on, on point because sometimes buyers can get just so overwhelmed, they just continually search. But for the most part, be patient with them when it comes to looking for homes. And, and if you focus on the previous discipline of get, building relationships, <clears throat> you'll be better off serving them and therefore helping them along this decision as well. But, but have patience. Um, this is number eight, and this kind of goes about kind of being responsive. It's very similar to that, but it's number eight is this, communicate effectively. Communicate effectively. One of the most important aspects of being a real, a successful real estate agent is being able to communicate effectively with everyone involved in the process, from your clients and colleagues, to loan officers, inspectors, uh, you name it. If there's ever any confusion or misunderstanding, it's important that you're able to clear things up so that everyone is on the same page, right? So communicate effectively. Um, one of the things this does go back to some of the other disciplines is it's being educated. Um, if you're highly educated on the market, you know what's going on, you can communicate better and more effectively because you understand what it is you're trying to say. You're not saying a lot of, um, well, kind of, maybes, you know, those type of things. You're more direct because you have the data and the education to kind of back it up. And it's going to help you to communicate more effectively. Um, but in, in regards to exactly how to be more effective at communication, there are a lot of books written on great communication between husband and wife and, and kids and friends and colleagues and clients, all those type of things. But here are what I have kind of pulled from that. One is this, be a good listener. Be a good listener. One of the most important skills uh, for any real estate agent is to be a good listener. It really, really is. You need to be able to listen carefully to your clients in order to understand their needs and, and wants. Additionally, you need to be able to listen to other agents and professionals in order to stay up to date on the, on the latest industry news and trends. Uh, but being a good listener and, and what and what you're hearing and just absorbing that information will help you with a lot of the other disciplines too, like building relationships and communicating and be responsive because you're listening to what's going on. So you, you, you kind of have the information you need to be able to respond effectively 
back to them. So sometimes it's best just to listen. If they're complaining or griping or throwing a fit or whatever, sometimes it's best just to listen. And that is effective communication, right? Um, <clears throat> another one is this, be clear and concise when communicating with clients. Be clear and concise. It is important that you are clear and concise. What I say needs to be understood by the person I'm saying it to. And I say concise because sometimes we can use so many words that the person that's listening to us loses track of what we're actually trying to say. Now, I can be very guilty of this. I think you guys can relate. We we end up having all this information in our heads that, we, that comes very natural to us that we just fully understand. And so we begin to explain everything in technical terms and in detail. And the buyer and seller are just sitting there. It's like, I don't have it. I'm not following at all. So being clear and concise is very much effective in helping you to communicate better. And again, that goes back to some of the other disciplines about understanding and being educated and how to relay that information and those type of things. And the final tip on this, on this topic is being professional. It is important to remember that you are a professional when communicating with clients. This means that you should avoid using slang, profound, Vanity and and also the way you dress, the way you behave, you need to be professional at all times. When you're engaging with the consumer, you need to be professional because you want them to understand that you are a professional and what you have to say matters and that you are also there to listen and then respond with clear, concise communications. So be a good listener, be clear and concise, and then be professional. All right, the final one that I'm going to share is don't give up. <laughs> this is a discipline. Don't give up. Even when everything gets tough, it's important that you do not give up on the dreams that you have set about being a real estate agent. You got in this industry for a specific reason, and I guarantee you there was some kind of dream or goal attached to that. Write that down and do not give up. And it is a discipline to not give up. Right. If I was to correlate this into running, because I, I tend to kind of do that because it just kind of breaks us out of the real estate industry a little bit. And just another perspective, I could translate this into running. Right. My kids are running a 5K race. Everything against them hurts. Everything is painful. They have to keep pushing through. They're, they're exhausted. They're ready to quit. But they have to keep going when it's the worst, when everything is the hardest it can be, when everything just kind of feels like I can't go any farther then what happens? That finish line is right there. And when they cross the finish line, they fall down and they're, exa they're exhausted. But what do they feel? They feel accomplishment. They feel like they did it and they feel like they could do it again. And they succeeded, right? So you can apply that same kind of logic right back into real estate and what you do. The disciplining of not giving up, doing things that make you uncomfortable, that put you outside of your, your comfort zone. Those are hard things to do, but don't give up doing them. You know, you, you'll go to any industry conference or anything, you'll hear, hear about all these ideas, and I guarantee you're sitting in the audience and you're thinking, man, yeah, door knocking, I should probably do that because that's what all the top sellers do, or I should go after for sale by owners, or I should be calling, you know, 20-something people a day, but man, it's just so hard, and I get rejected 24-7, everybody always says no, those type of things, right? And trust me, we're, we're all guilty of that. We sit in the crowd, and that's, that's what goes through our head, right? That self-doubt begins to come back. Don't give up. Do those things. Do those things, right? Do those things. So just to wrap this up, guys, here are the, the uh, 10 things that are the nine things I gave, gave you. So get organized. Stay organized in your life, in your business, and everything that you do, your car, your filing system, get a good CRM. Make sure that all that is together and you are ready to build a business. Bring it all together. Uh, number two is stay focused. Make sure that you are focused on the things that truly matter, the things that are going to help you grow your real estate business. Start cutting out a lot of the noise and stay focused. Number three is be responsive. Respond quickly and promptly to the people that are reaching out to you that need information. Does not mean that you need to be available 24-7. It simply means means that you are going to communicate and they know that you will respond. So be responsive. Stay educated. Number four, stay educated. Stay current in what you're learning. Stay current in, in the industry news. Stay current in technology. Stay current on your CRM. Stay educated on how all this stuff can come together to help you build a real estate business. Number five is be ethical, be honest, be trustworthy, be transparent. Be focused on delivering a good service to your client 
even when it might jeopardize your own benefit. Be ethical. Uh, number six, build relationships. Always stay focused on building, building relationships. Nothing else matters other than connecting with people and trying to serve them well to help them accomplish their goals. Because if you can help them accomplish their goals, it's ultimately going to help you to accomplish yours. All right. Number seven is have patience. You need to have patience with your clients. They're going to be erratic. They're going to be emotional. Things are going to go crazy. You need to be the level-headed person, and you need to have that patience to hear them out, give them that concise communication, that concise information they need to help calm them down and get them to the goal that they want, buying or selling a home, but, but have patience with them. Number eight is communicate effectively. So in other words, when I communicate, I'm going to communicate with the facts. I'm going to communicate with truth. And I'm going to communicate often as, as I need to, to be able to be effective in building that relationship. So I'm going to do that through being a good listener, be, a, be, be clear and concise, and, and I'm going to be professional. Uh, number nine is the final one. Do not give up. Perseverance is key in this business. You're going to do a lot of things that make you uncomfortable. Don't give up. Keep pushing through because you will get results from that. So what is the key to becoming a successful real estate agent? There are many things that contribute to this. Many, many things I could say contribute to this. But I do believe that these disciplines that we have talked about right here are truly essential. They are truly essential in one way or the other. And if you can focus on mastering these, I, I do believe this, you'll be well on your way to a long prosperous career in real estate. You really, really will, but you got to hone in on it. You got to focus in on this, right? So I hope you guys have gotten something of value out of this. And if you have, please consider subscribing, ringing the bell, so, um, hitting the like thumbs up button, all that kind of stuff on YouTube. Obviously it does help. Um, but I, I do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. It's always great. And it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I stand here humbly uh, with the ability to come and talk. Um, and share stuff that I'm learning and I'm walking through. And I thank you guys for giving me the time uh, to come here and listen to me talk and hopefully impart some something of value to you guys. I really do appreciate it. And, um, and we got somebody in the comment, yeah, Hansa. So she, yeah, she said, yes, good point, responsive. Thanks, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Steve, thank you, sir. Great show. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, sir. Guys, like always, Oh, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Appreciate you greatly. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Advantage Live show. My name is Adam Gullett. We'll be back here next Wednesday for another show. Uh, we'll bring something of value back to you to help you build your real estate business. In the meantime, be fearless. Keep pushing forward. Never stop being relentless in your pursuit of excellence. And I'll see you next week. Take care.